Hello everybody, this is Pastor Dean, and this is Sunday service, uh, a wonderful time where we can uh, maybe spend 30 minutes together and talk about the Lord and talk about his blessings, pray to him, praise him, and just give him a big kiss on the lips and say, thank you, Father, for creating me. Sunday service with Pastor Dean. I hope you can make it here every week. You know, I'd like to go to Psalm 103. I've got uh, some beautiful revelation from the Lord about Psalm 103 today. Um, and the beauty part of radio here is that you can uh, put me on pause, I guess, if you have to, and go get your Bible and and and, and follow along with me because I'm going to take parts of Psalm 103 and and, and take it line by line, dissect it. It's such a beautiful psalm. It was written by David, King David. And it's really a psalm of, of, of great thanksgiving to the Lord. But it brings up some revelations about the Lord that I've got to tell you about. And I, I know that you're, it's going to create joy in your spirit when you hear this. So g grab yourself a cup of coffee. And... Um, uh, sit down for a second with me and let's have a nice discussion about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. You know, in Psalm 103, the first line reads this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That's the first line of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, David opened up, uh, and many times when we go to Sunday services, we open the programs with uh, song and praise. It's the highest form of praise is song. I wish we had the licenses to uh, play a few hymns uh, before I... Uh, I preach, but we can't do that because of legal restrictions. <clears throat> but here's the reason for praise. You know, I always thought praise was a form of false flattery. I used to say to myself, why do we have to praise the Lord? You go up there and you, you say, well, bless his holy name, and, and you try to act holy in front of him, and you, and you try to flatter him so you can get something out of him. That's not what praise is. See, you're a, uh, let me explain it this way. You're a triune being. Do you know what a triune being means? That means you're three parts, tri, part, tripart being. You have three parts. You have a body, obviously. You've got a mind, obviously. And that's really your soul. Your mind is your soul, according to the Bible. And your uh, spirit is the part that's going to be hanging around forever. It's going to be hanging around forever someplace. And whether we believe it or not, whether we like it or not, our spirit is going to be somewhere forever and forever and forever. And this little thing called life that we're experiencing and I'm pretty close to the end myself. I'm 69 years old this year. And the end is, is, uh, is looking more, <laughs> it's, it's becoming brighter, which is okay. But this little time here on this earth called life is the decision period where we, we make a decision. We don't know when it's going to end, but we make a decision to, uh, house our spirit either in the presence of God or the presence of the demons who have denied God. But anyway, getting back to the triune being, the reason for praise is because when we go to the Lord, we've got to go to the Lord with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our bodies. That's the triune being, heart, soul, and spirit. And we go there and we dedicate everything to the Lord, because he created it. And we want all of 
our being to bless him and say, listen, I'm giving you my all. It's almost like an intercourse with God. And intercourse is, it, 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 you know, physical intercourse is when you give your whole body to your mate. Well, spiritual intercourse is when you give everything, your mind, your body, your spirit, to the Lord and say, listen, I'm giving this to you in thanksgiving for everything that you've done for me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. But you know what? I have to inform some people. And this sounds a little bit coarse. Sounds a little rough. It sounds a little rude. It's unlike uh, the typical Pastor Dean. Um, you see, you're really not entitled to address the Lord, King of the universe. You're really not entitled. You have no business. You're filthy and dirty. You're shameful and sinful. You have no right to go to his throne room in your condition unless unless you have said to the Lord I am accepting what you did for me at the cross. You paid for my sins by having your son die a despicable death on the cross so that I would have the entitlement to call you my father. Once you believe in Jesus, heaven opens its doors, its windows, its ears. You're a full fledged family member. Oh, that's why we've got to praise the Lord. That's why we've got to use every bit of our faculty, every part of us, our body, our ears, our eyes, our nose, our whole body, our whole mind, our whole spirit, and go to the Lord in respite and say, Father, I dedicate this moment in the name of your holy precious son Jesus and thank you for everything you've done to me bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits it says in verse 2 you see father if it hadn't been for your son Jesus I would still be dark and dirty. I'd be still in such a stinky form, sinless, sinful, unappreciative, and not worthy of being in your presence if it weren't for Jesus. And you're the one who did it for me. I'm redeemed because of you. I'm entitled to go into your closet of supernatural powers. And when, when life gets too complicated because of your son, Jesus Christ, I can go into that closet of supernatural powers and I can defeat the spirits of darkness with your tools. All because of Jesus, I can do this. Yes, I have to say it again, Lord God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Christ is the source of all these benefits. The cross is the means. It says in verse 3 of Psalm 103, 
Bless the Lord who forgives all your iniquities. Wow. Bless the Lord who heals all your diseases. Hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Everything that I've ever done that is embarrassingly wrong, sinful, evil. And man, I think back, I have been despicably selfish. I have been despicably prideful. Lord God, I have slapped you in the face, I don't know how many times, spit in your face out of ignorance. And you kept those arms open to me, saying, I still love you. I can't understand how somebody could be that beautiful. I can't. I haven't got the capacity to understand how wonderful you are, God. In spite of all my shortcomings, all my iniquities, all my sins, all my evil, you said to me, it's gone. Because you believe in my son. You have received the entitlement that he has, and that is to be my child, my perfect child, who's never sinned. You have a perfect record because of your brother Jesus. That's a loving God. No wonder David praised him. He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. My friend, according to 1 Peter 2.24, Jesus took those stripes for one reason, and that was to heal your diseases. It took faith for you to claim that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Now it's going to take faith to claim Jesus Christ as your healer. And once you get to that altar of acceptance and say, I really, really believe that Jesus Christ is my healer, the healing window will be opened from heaven and the blessings of healing will come upon you. A lot of people don't believe that. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to begin by saying <clears throat> I go to the doctor. I've had throat cancer. I've had all kinds of disease, pancreatitis. Uh, I, I have had all kinds of deadly diseases. I should be six feet under the ground. And it, if it hadn't been for the mercy of the of God the Father and the stripes of Jesus, I would be right now, and I'd be burning in hell too, my friend. But in, in Psalm 103, verse 3, it says, The Lord forgives all of my iniquities. Not just, and when I confess my sins, according to 1 John 1, 9, go to that verse sometimes. 1 John 1, 9, it'll tell you that if you confess your sins, you repent to the Lord. The sin that you're confessing is not only, that's not the only one that's forgiven. It's all your sins. All your sins, everything, everything, everything. When you're in the repentant mood and you go to the Father for forgiveness, everything, even the ones you've forgotten, everything, everything is washed away. And everything is forgotten as far as the Father is concerned, as far as the East is from the West. That's a loving God. I'm trying to forgive people that did things to me 15, 20 years ago. And only by the grace of God I can forgive them because my body, my mind wants to get even. <laughs> That's the carnal side of me. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all my iniquities. I am as pure as they come because of Jesus. He heals my diseases. He gave me doctors. He gave me medicine. And he gave me supernatural healing. He gave me everything I need to get healed. Thank you, Lord. I've got to praise you for that. Verse 4 says, Who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. See, the word redeemed, do you know what the word redeemed means? The word redeemed means to purchase something back that has been lost through death or through default, or through failure to pay. Jesus, and Jesus alone, according to historical fact, went to the cross and was killed and lived. This man lived a perfect life. He was the perfect Lamb of God. Went to the cross, was accused falsely, was humiliated before his friends and his foes. He was murdered, brutally murdered, something like we'd see ISIS do today. But they drew it out. They made it, they just didn't kill him. They weren't merciful enough to just chop his head off. No, no. They whipped him. They scourged him. They spat upon him. They humiliated him. They ground dirt in him. They made him look so disgusting to people that they couldn't even recognize his physical features. He was so beaten. And he did it for us. He redeemed my life. He purchased back my life from the devil purchased it back through his death. I was doomed for destruction. And instead of letting me go down that road of destruction out of his love, God the Father sent Jesus Christ, redeemed me, bought me back, purchased me. And then he crowned me. He crowned me. Because I'm part of, part of royalty now. He crowned me with, with loving kindness. And tender mercies. Because he knows how frail I am. He knows how fickle. He knows how tempted I can be when things go wrong. He knows that I'm a very, very fragile human being who cannot live on my own. I must depend upon his tender mercies. And he's willing to do that for not only the redeemed, but for those of you out there who have not yet claimed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5 says, Who satisfies your mouth, with good things so that your mouth your so that your youth rather so that your youth is renewed like the eagles well that that verse right there i don't realize i don't think you realize how beautiful that verse is i don't think you realize it because i didn't until i found out something i'm going to repeat the verse and then i'm going to explain something to you and if it hadn't been for jimmy swagger I would not have realized this. The verse reads, Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, the eagle was used by the Holy Spirit as an example. Why? L listen to the wisdom here. Because once a year, eagles cast off their old feathers. Once a year. And they get new ones. So, in spite of an eagle's age, they have the continued look of youthfulness. Wouldn't that be nice if we could do that? <laughs> but we can spiritually. Because, see, upon acceptance, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, and, and when you accept the fact that he went to the cross for your sins, and you thank God for that, and you say, Jesus, come into my heart. When you accept that truth, you become a new creature with the guilt of sin removed. And you always have a youthful spirit. So let me read that line again. It, it, it takes on a new meaning here. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow. You know, I am, I'm so fortunate. God has put forth good thoughts in my mind. He's given me the Bible. So whenever I'm out of good thoughts, whenever I get into a... When the well is dry, when... I'm depressed, and when darkness sets in, the Lord has been good enough to give me this Bible so that I can infuse into my physical, spiritual, and mental being. So I can infuse like a, a needle that the doctor would give you, a vitamin B12 shot. I can infuse life into my system by just reading the Bible, God's Word. So after reading God's Word, when I'm down and depressed and depraved, after reading it, my mouth starts to say new and beautiful things. He satisfies my mouth with good things. Wow, the Lord really has taken care of everything, hasn't he? Verse 6 says, The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. Well, if I am oppressed, even by another human being, 
the only way that that oppression can occur is by inspiration of the devil. It's a dark force that has created my oppression. And the word oppressed has to do with Satan's heavy hand upon the human race. We've got people who are free as a bird in this country, in the United States, and they're oppressed by the devil because they're depressed. They don't know what's going to happen. They might have $17 million in the bank, and they might have 14 homes with 15 bathrooms. But they're oppressed because they're 78 years old. They have all this money, all these physical things, and they know that death's approaching, and they don't know what's going to happen after that. Well, that's oppression. That's darkness. That's not living a happy life. Well, the Lord alone can deliver those who are oppressed by the devil. And he does so through our faith in him. And what he has done for us at the cross. You see, I'm 69 years old and I could drop dead tomorrow of a heart attack or a stroke. But I know one thing and one thing is, is what keeps me happy is that <laughs> you can't kill me. Because my spirit is going to go right to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I can't be depressed. I can't be depressed. Because even if I suffer a, a debilitating stroke and I last for a couple of years and I haven't got all of my powers and I say, I speak against it, by the way, to anybody. I just... I prayed for somebody with a stroke yesterday, and because of the goodness of God, that stroke turned into a mild stroke, and the person is in the hospital, and she's going to regain all of her faculties back. God bless Judy Eureka. But anyway, even if I were debilitated and old, and as, as I'm getting older, my body is getting older, my bones are giving me a tougher time, arthritis tries to set in, as, 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 and we rebuke it uh, naturally. We have to re rebuke it. But my body is getting old. It doesn't work as good as it used to because it's part of the curse. Adam and Eve are responsible for that, the devil. And I never was supposed to die, really, but I am dying physically. But I, I have something to look forward to because when I pass from this life to the next, my body is going to be renewed like the eagle's. My spiritual body is going to be beautiful. I'm going to be able to look at you and say, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Yes, the Lord has taken care of everything. Nobody can kill us. We've got happy days ahead of us. And those happy days will never end because the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross. Wow. Wow. Well, we're almost at the end of our Sunday service. I want to invite, first of all, I've got to tell you something. I don't ask for money on this show. Um, but I do ask you to do one thing, and that is to share this program with a hearty recommendation by you to somebody else. If you uh, can email it to three people, share it on Facebook and Twitter and whatever network, iHeart or whatever network around the world you're listening to me. I'm Pastor Dean Pepin, Healing Hands of Jesus Ministries. You can write to me. And I will pray for you if you need a miracle. God answers our prayers here. I've got a small ministry, but it's one of the most powerful ministries in the world because of the Holy Precious Spirit. But please pass this along to others. That's our payment. Our, our ask. Instead of asking you for money, we ask you to pay it forward by giving this program to somebody else. At least three people. And that's a form of evangelizing. And that evangelizing will eventually get us to revival. And those of you listening to me, 
saying, how can I come to Jesus? You can do it right now. You can say, Jesus, I don't know you too well, but I'd like to learn more about you, and I want to believe. Will you help me believe? Father, God, I know you're in heaven. Pastor Dean says you are. And he sees miracles that you perform every single day. Would you please help me in my unbelief? You've given me a seed of faith to get me this far. Lord God, show me the next step. I want to accept Jesus in my heart. And Jesus is my Savior. He paid for my sins. I want to be perfect like him. And I want to be happy like him because I want heaven as my eternal home. I pray this in Jesus' name. You went along with those words. If you have to go back on the tape here and and replay them, you're a citizen of heaven. Now, you've got to pursue it. You've got to look at the gospel. You've got to come back to this program. We do a five-minute program called Five Mesmerizing Minutes every single day. We do a Sunday service here for a half an hour every single Sunday. Now you've got to pursue it. If you don't pursue it, you lose your faith. It's just you don't take a pill and and then forget things and go back to your sinful life. You've got to pledge to the Lord that you're going to do your best to be as good as you can. And you know what? You're going to slip up anyway. But with his help, but just by asking for his help, you will be amazed at his ability. I'm Pastor Dean Pepin. My email is dean.pepin at gmail.com. This has been Sunday Service. I love you. God bless you. See you next week. But be a follower of this program, and you'll get a reminder when I come on the air. Every day we do five mesmerizing minutes, and every Sunday we do Sunday services. God bless you. I love you. And talk to you later.